this morning just for a little while. I want to talk about a life dedicated to God. Yes. And we, we took the reading from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And if you will, turn there with me and we'll read it again. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Everybody there? Yes. And it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. When you look at today's society, we talked this morning in Bible class about marriage. Your husband is thy maker. But when you look at society nowadays, everywhere you look, you see a marriage, but it's not the marriage that God instituted. It is not the marriage that God ever had in his mind. You see women marrying women. You see men marrying men. And society says that's okay. But we as Christians, we can't conform to what the world says. Amen. We can't, they even have rules out now or laws out now that you can't say anything against it. But when you serve God, when you have to stand up for right, it's best to obey God Amen. rather than man. Amen. Now it's getting to a point to where if they want to say, well, if it has to be a man and woman, I now identify as a woman. And society says, that's okay. You can do that. You now have men that's identifying as women, competing in women's sports. Mm -hmm. And they are actually winning, which they're supposed to because they are a man. Right. Right. No matter how much you take a pill to lower your testosterone, right. no matter what you try to do, you was born a man. You are still a man in God's eyes. No matter how you make it, no matter what society says, you are a man. And we as Christians cannot conform to the ways of the world. Turn your Bibles to Genesis. Genesis chapter 18. I want you to watch, and we know, we're familiar with the story. We know what God done to two cities for the, for the very reason of what we're talking about. We're going to go to 19. Of what we're talking about right now. When you're at chapter 19, say amen. 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 Listen to what it says. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and ye shall rise early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide with in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned into him and entered into his house. And he made a feast and did break unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed around the house, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out to us that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brother, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known a man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you that you may do to them as good is in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came to sojourn, and he will need to be judged. Now we will deal worse with thee and with them. And they pressed so upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break down the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house and shut the door. And they smote the men that was at the door of the house with blindness, 
both small and great. So they wearied themselves to find the door. Do you hear what just happened? Mm -hmm. yeah. God is destroying, is going to destroy a whole city for homosexuality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much society tries to convince us that it's right, it is wrong. When you, you now look at every television movie, that's whatever your favorite movie is, which used to be a decent movie, you're going to have some glimpse or some appearance of either a man on man or a woman on woman. And if we do not get to the point to understand that it is wrong, as long as we keep looking at those things, you know what we're doing? We're giving that movie or whatever we're watching, we're giving it ratings to help it keep going. Do you see the, con the conformity of it? Yeah. Because you can disagree with it, but if I'm watching it, That's right. what am I doing? Right. Even though I'm saying it's wrong on this end, mm -hmm. but I'm sitting and I'm watching it at home in the privacy of my own home. What am I doing? I'm supporting it. Right. Paul said over in the book of Galatians, if I build again the things that I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Right. So in other words, if I'm trying, if I'm tearing down the, de the devil's strongholds, then I turn around and I agree with the devil's stronghold. Paul said that I am a transgressor. Yeah. But when you live a life devoted to God, That's right. you will not allow the world to dictate your mindset. That's and I want right. to go, we read the scripture reading, but of course, we're going to go back to the Old Testament. Go to the book of Daniel. We're very familiar with Daniel. There were three boys in the book of Daniel that was thrown into the fiery furnace, and their names are? Not so. Not so. See, the names that we just stated is the names that pagans gave them. Yes, See, right. their right. original names was not Shadrach, right. Meshach, yep. and Abednego. But if we do not watch, and this is how the this is how Satan does it. Satan is very cunning with what he does. Right. Yeah. We have read that story so many times, and we relate Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. But we're not realizing that when they went into Babylonian captivity. Nebuchadnezzar had changed their names. The names that they had yeah. was God-fearing yeah, names. That's right. That's right. The names that they had associated them with their God. When Nebuchadnezzar took over, came and, and took over Jerusalem, and he turned there. Let's read it. Daniel chapter 1. When you get, when everybody get there, say I'm there. And it says, read it for me until I get there. Verse 1. Verse 1. Start at verse 1. Listen at it. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Asphad, the master of his <clears throat> eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding, science, and, <clears throat> and such as had ability, ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. See what it says? Nebuchadnezzar has now came in, he's taken over Jerusalem, and now that he's taken, taken people captive from Jerusalem, he's going to take some handsome men, some very smart men, and he wants to teach them what? The language and the ways of the Chaldeans. So now as he's looking out at these men, and he, in verse 5, it says, And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, 
and the wine which he drank so nourished them three years. Mm -hmm. And at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now among these were children of, of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, yeah. and Azariah. Right. Who is that? <laughs> we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But when you live in a life of God, you don't allow society to change who you are. The reason Nebuchadnezzar had changed their names because he wanted to get them as far away from God mm -hmm. as he possibly could. Right. So the names now that they have, the name Shadrach, let's, let's look at their original names. Daniel meant, or Hananiah, it says, God has been gracious. Mishael, who is what God is. Azariah, God has helped. Daniel's name stands for God is my judge. That's right. mm -hmm. Do you hear how the names keep them intact and help them remind them of their God? Yeah. But then Nebuchadnezzar comes in and he changed Daniel's name to Bel Teshazar. B E L. The first three letters yeah. is the name of a pagan God. Yeah. And what it stands for is May. The lady or the wife of the god Baal protect the king. Mm -hmm. So now he has changed he has changed Daniel Daniel name to a pagan name. So every time he calls Baal T. Shazar, what is Nebuchadnezzar thinking of? His God. He's thinking of his God. And if Daniel does not live a life dedicated to the God, it will cause Nebuchadnezzar to believe what he's doing is right. right. Then he goes on and he, from Hananiah, he names him Shadrach. And some of the writings say that it's supposed to be Shadrach Ku. That is another idol god. Meshach and Abednego, Abednego, they say it's a distorted version of Nebo. Y'all remember that God? Yeah. And when we talk about this story, myself included, we reference them by Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And what we are further doing, we are pushing paganism, mm -hmm. and we don't see it. Let me let me let me show you. Watch the, watch the talk. You know, black folks are always late. You ever heard that? Yes. Yeah. You ever said it? Yeah. Why do we say, is it true? No. Nope. It's nope. not. Not always. No, it's not. See, we say that because, again, when you look at the black race, why is that said? Why is it said? Because it's negative. Say it again. It's negative. Because it's negative. And what we do, we allow society to say things so much that it becomes a norm. Yeah. Then we will say, if you're having an event, if it's going to start at 8 o'clock, you better tell the black folks it's going to start at 7 because then they'll be on time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we laugh at that, but do you, do you see yeah. how it is? Yeah. Do you see how cunning the devil is? Yeah. Yeah. We used to, when we was younger, we would go skating. And we always went, not when our folks was there. And I was happy. We went when the white people was there. Because I knew if I failed, they were going to help me. I knew I was going to have help. But the conditioning that I've seen on TV, the conditioning that I've heard about my own people, you don't want to be around a whole bunch of us. You don't want to be around a whole bunch of us. And we see it through the media. Every time, whenever they interview one of us, do you ever see them in a suit? Every now and then you may. But it's some of the not so well kept people that represents us. 
Why? It's by design. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, when he brought these Hebrew, these Jew, these Jews in, it was by design that he changed their name. He wanted to get them as far away from God. He wanted to put God so far out of their mind that they would serve him and his God. When you read in the first couple of verses, it said after he took Jerusalem, where did he take the utensils? He took them and put them in the temple of his God. And now you have the Hebrew boys. I say Hebrew boys. Nebuchadnezzar says, I'm going to feed you now. I'm the king. I'm going to feed you. For three years, I'm going to do this. So we talked about a progress this morning in Bible class. If Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah is not dedicated to God in the space of those three years, what's going to happen to their thinking? It's going to transform mm -hmm. from believing God yep. and transform into believing the ways of the Chaldeans is the right way. Yeah, yeah. But now as we keep reading, it says in verse 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the, with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuch. And the question is, why? How is it he's in captivity, but he has favor with the person that's over him? Because Daniel is living a life that's dedicated to God. Daniel was born around 621 B.C. He was taken into captivity at 605 B.C. You know where that puts Daniel? He's about 15 or 16. You have a 15 or 16-year-old boy and his companions going into captivity at that young age dedicated to God. To the point that when the king goes to feed them, Daniel says, I'm not been to defile myself. Now bring it home. What do we eat? Whatever we want. Some of us. Whatever we want. And then we wonder why our health is deteriorating. Some of it, yes, is because God, by design, as you get older, things go down. That's by design. But a lot of it is because of what the world puts out. And it, and it makes it so readily available that we have become conditioned, man, it's so expensive to eat healthy. So what I'll do, I'll ride by a fast food restaurant and I'll hit the dollar menu because it's convenient. But Daniel said, I'm not doing that because Daniel could have been looking at if this meat or this food is offered to idols, I will not. Take any part of it. Right. What, the, what Nebuchadnezzar and most of the time reading the backdrop on this, how he wanted his men, he wanted them to be a little pudgy. He wanted them to have some meat on them. But now you know eating vegetables won't do that to you. It's not going to, to, to it's not going to make you have a pudgy beard. It's going to keep you fit. It's going to keep you lean. But it's not going to be the appearance that Nebuchadnezzar wants of his men. But what he cannot do, he cannot deny how well they look. Because who are they dedicated to? Their life is dedicated to God. Not just, I'm dedicated to God, so I'm not going to worship these idols. I'm dedicated to God all the way down to the things that I put in my body. Because I know if I put the healthy things in my body, that's going to help my body regenerate itself when it gets tired. That's going to help me if I have an injury. It's going to help my body. 
That's going to help my body recover quicker. That's going to help me keep my mind sharp. Amen. That's going to help keep certain diseases off. I'm going to do, I'm going to dedicate myself, and I'm going to do what God told me. But when your life is not dedicated to Amen. God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. And I need something to eat. You're going to come out of Egypt. And you're going to say, as the children of Israel did, it would have been best if we would have stayed in Egypt. Because when we was down in Egypt, we had everything to eat. And God had to come along and tell them, I need you to eat bitter herbs. I need you to eat all of these things because it needs to clean your blood out. Because of all of that unhealthy stuff you have been eating in the pagan world is not good for you. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king meat. Let's keep reading. Amen. And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink, while he should see your face, worth liking than the children which are of your sort. Then he shall make me in danger of my head to the king. Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuch had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat the portions of the king meet, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Daniel just said, <coughs> give us just for ten days, give us for ten days vegetables and water. And then you take us at the end of those 10 days, you take us and you compare us to the ones that have eaten the king's food mm -hmm. and to us. And if you see that we are in worse shape, then we'll follow what you're telling us to do. Do you see the faith? Yeah. Yeah. When you're living a life dedicated to God, Amen. your faith in God is going to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to try God first. Right. And if, listen at it, if it does not work, then I'm going to take, take another route. But the faith that Daniel and, and who? Michelle, Azariah, and Hananiah had, they said, we know this is going to work. Because we know and we have faith in our God that he's going to deliver us. He's going to do everything he has always done and even more. Yeah. Amen. So at the end of the days, it says their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in the flesh than all the children who did eat the portion of the king meat. You ever, my wife and I, we, we have limited our meat intake almost to nothing. But sometimes when you when you eat the red meat or whatever you eat, how do you feel? How do you feel? It makes you feel bad. But if your mind is conditioned, even though it's hard for your body to process that, your mind has been conditioned to believe, I need it. Right. Yeah. I need it. Right. You think about some of the animals in the animal kingdom. Think about gorillas. What meat do they eat? Yeah. Are they strong? No. <laughs> are they? Yeah. Because what are they eating? They're eating vegetables. Everything that's green. Where are they getting the protein from? Plants. They're getting it from plants. The way that God designed it. God told Adam and Eve in the beginning, every green herb I have given you for food. That's right. But Satan came along, <coughs> took their eyes off of what God had provided for them, had, had called them to look at something different, and ever since then, we have been on a downfall. Amen. Ever since then. Amen. Think about your life. Think about days or weeks when you have been fervent in serving God. Everything has went right. Even when things was going wrong, it went right. But then think about those times when you're not so dedicated to God. And it seems like everything around you is falling down. Mm -hmm. yeah. To the point you have to realize 
like the son did. My daddy has everything. Let me go back home. For us, let me pick up my faith. God, I know I failed at this point. Amen. God, I see the chastisement that you have given me. But I'm going to dust myself off because your grace and your mercy. Yes. And I'm going to start living a life more dedicated Amen. to you. Amen. And that's what Daniel and his companions did. And then it says, verse 17. And as for these children, and as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Daniel had understanding and visions and dreams. And now at the end of the days that the king had said, he should bring them in. And the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among them was all found nothing like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than the magicians, the astrologers that were all in his realm. And Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, all his years of reigning, he had the magicians. He had astrologers. He had everybody around him that told him what he needed. Why all of a sudden, when Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah come on the scene, now all of the people around Nebuchadnezzar now is no good. What happens? What happens? Because now that Nebuchadnezzar is surrounded by people with a life that's dedicated to God. And now by them being dedicated to God, it is exposing Nebuchadnezzar, his God, and all the people associated with him. Because they are living a life dedicated to God. Nebuchadnezzar goes on to have a dream. And he was troubled by this dream. And so he goes to all of his people. And he said, I need you to tell me the interpretation of this dream. The astrologist comes along. They say, well, what we need you to do, King, you need to tell us the dream. If you tell us the dream, then we can tell you the interpretation of it. Watch God. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar says, I don't even know what I've dreamed. But you better tell me. You better tell me what I dreamed, and you better tell me the interpretation of it. If you do not tell me, you're going to die. All of you all are going to die. Because now Nebuchadnezzar had this problem, and the people that he could once rely on, now that God has come on the scene, he's seeing now that these people, he can't rely on them. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy, chapter 14. Watch chapter 4. Listen to what it says, verse 19. When you get there, you can read it. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. <clears throat> As it reads, At least thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should it be driven, driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God had divided unto all nations un, 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 under the whole heaven. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. Deuteronomy 17, verses 1 to, through 5. 17, 1 through 5. We all have it? Amen. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep, wherein is blemish, or any evil, evil flavor, flavoredness. <clears throat> For that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that 
<clears throat> that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or moon or any of the hosts of heaven, which I have not commanded. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Then thou, <clears throat> then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which has committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. Hear what God is talking about. Amen. People that look at the stars and say, I can look at the constellations and I can tell you what's going to happen. What is God condemning? He's condemning it because what is it? Witchcraft. It's witchcraft craft, and it's idol worship. Mm -hmm. It's idol worship. We have been going through the Old Testament and the children of Israel's problem is idol worship because they are going into these pagan lands not devoted to God like they should right. and they are falling prey to the happenings around them. Right. And now Nebuchadnezzar has these same people in his company. Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, he see, they see all of these people. And now the king has had a dream. And they can't tell the king what the dream is. So they can't interpretate the dream. Nebuchadnezzar says, I'm going to make a decree. If you do not tell me this dream, everybody's going to die. And then go down to chapter 2 in Daniel. And it says, in the second year in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break him. And the king commanded and called the magicians, the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to show the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria. O king, live forever. Tell the servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, This thing is gone from me. If you will not make known to me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know a certainty that you would gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. In other words, what he's saying, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You can't do this, so you're just trying to buy time. Amen. You know I can't tell you what's going on. You are wasting time. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, the people that he's always believed in, now that God has put his people in the presence that's faithful to God, it is exposing Nebuchadnezzar's, all of his minions, and it is showing Nebuchadnezzar, you know what? Y'all been lying to me all this time. You all have been lying to me all this time. And when we live a life that's dedicated to God, and society is doing what it does, and you have a person come up and they talk with you. You know what? Well, I identify as such and such and such and such. If my life is dedicated to God before they leave me, you know what we're going to do. We're going to discuss this. Because God never intended. You can't show anywhere in Scripture what God ever intended for man to be with man and woman to be with woman. Amen. Amen. But if we allow society to dictate what we believe, we will fall prey to it. We will fall prey to it all the time. We see the best example in scripture, we read it this morning in Ephesians chapter 5, when it talked about a husband and wife, but who was it talking about? It was talking about Christ and the church. One man, one woman for life. It's not one man, I can get rid of this woman if I want to, marry somebody else. That's not the way God designed it. One man, one woman for life. Will I identify as a woman? 
so we can be married, I'll be a man, and you'll be a woman. One man, one woman for life. Well, I've taken the pills, and my testosterone is down. Are you? Can you be fruitful, and can you multiply? Well, we adopted. One man, one woman that can be fruitful and multiply. God did not design man to be that way. But society says, even in the children's movies, they are now pushing it. Even the superheroes, that was a, a superhero movie that was across seas that was coming out, and they forbid it from coming out because the character was now gay. But in the Americas, you know what we would do? We're going to air it. Because everybody should have a choice to what you want to be. But when you are a child of God, you don't have a choice. Amen. You have been bought with a price. Amen. You have to study what God tells you. You have to know the difference between what society says and what God says. Amen. And if what God says is not what society says, I'm going with God. Right. Right. Nebuchadnezzar, he sends out the decree. In verse 10, we'll finish reading. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon earth that can show the king the matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such thing in a magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It is a rare thing that the king requires, and there is none that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Now, I remind you, they're not talking about the god. No. Nope. They're talking about their god. And it says, verse 12, For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth, and the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellow to be slain. Then Daniel answered with the counsel and wisdom of Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which is gone forth to slay the wise men. He answered and said unto Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in desiring of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and his companions. And they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. Then Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep, seek deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in darkness, and the light dwelleth in him. I thank thee and I praise thee, O thou God of thy fathers, who have given me this wisdom and has made known unto me now that we, what we desire of thee, for thou hast made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in to Ariok after he has prayed to his God. See, when you live a life that's dedicated to God, God will reveal to you, back to the Sunday school, in his time, what's actually going on. But when you're not dedicated to God, it's certain things he will withhold from you. Because at the time, you are not spiritually ready for it. Right. Paul had this same problem when he was writing his letters. Mm -hmm. He said, there are some things I want to tell you, but I have to refrain because you are kernel-minded. Right. Yep. But when you develop a tight-knit relationship with God, when you are walking out in the world, you have studied God's word, and something may be unclear. But at the right time, God will reveal to you What's actually going on? And sometimes it'll make you, man, why didn't I see this before? Amen. <laughs> why didn't I see this before? Amen. And the question is, because I wasn't as close to God then as I am now. Right. Amen. But now Daniel goes in and it says, Therefore Daniel went into Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy them. The wise men of Babylon, he went in and said unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me before the king, 
and I will show the king the interpretation. Drop down to verse 27. Let's read verse 26. Watch it. Then the king answered and said unto Daniel, who's what? Name. Name is so now why is his name now being called Belteshazzar? All the time it's been Daniel. That's right. But now why is he called by his pagan name? Who's talking to him? The king. the king. And the king is going not to address him by Daniel, but he's going to address him by the name of his God. So when whatever Daniel does, you know what Nebuchadnezzar is thinking? God is doing this. But it's not the God. It's my God. But when you are dedicated to God, when you live a life dedicated to God, God will always show a distinction between his people and the world's people. Listen to that. Daniel answered and prayed and, and in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king has demanded, cannot the wise men, watch him making fun, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, and the soup sales show unto the king? King, you have all these people around you. They can't even tell you what's going on. Now the king is looking. Watch the opportunity. Daniel says, but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and make it known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. And Daniel goes on to tell the king the interpretation. He goes on to even tell him what he dreamed. And Nebuchadnezzar did see that you know what? It's something to these people. It's something to these people. But he never truly gives himself to their God. Because even though the devil will acknowledge God, they won't commit to him. Right. Remember in James? Even the devils believe right. Right. and right. they tremble. Right. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar believed what he was hearing, but I'm not finna follow him. Because see, they believe in many gods. If I follow him, he's just like all the others. But God always shows a distinction between his people and the world. Then it goes on. Drop down to verse 36. Daniel says, This is a dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof, O king. Thou, O king, are a king of kings. For the God of heaven has, has given thee a kingdom, power, and strength. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the fowls of the air, of heaven, rather, has he given into thy hand and has made thee ruler over them all. For thou art this head of gold, and after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee, and a third kingdom of brass, which shall thou rule over the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdues all things. And as iron breaketh all these, it shall break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou saw feet and toes part of potter's clay, and the part of iron and the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron. For as much thou saw iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Whereas thou saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay, meaning they're going to intermarry and the kingdom is going to start breaking down. Then it goes on to say, but in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom which shall not be left to another people and it shall break into pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. For as much thou sawest that stone that was cut out of the mountain made without hands and it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. You know what Daniel just told him about? Church. He just told him about the church is coming. Yeah. He has told Nebuchadnezzar, this, this image you've seen, you are that head of gold. No one's going to surpass you, but every kingdom below you 
It's going to break in pieces because you saw a stone that was cut out without hands. And now as you read the book of Daniel, for the world and Satan that says it doesn't matter, go to the church of your choice. Any church will do. When you read the book of Daniel, Daniel talks about a specific stone. He talks about a specific kingdom that's going to break in part all other kingdoms. And the world will tell you the church of Christ can't be the only church that's going to make it to heaven. That's what the world will tell you. But when you study the word of God, the word of God will tell you before the foundation of the world, God had had in his mind a place where he wanted all people, all languages, to serve him. And that place was in Christ Jesus. And Daniel is telling Nebuchadnezzar with the dream that he had, he's telling Nebuchadnezzar that in the days of these kings, God is going to set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. And so now we move on, coming down to the end. We will move on to the three boys. Nebuchadnezzar finished with Daniel. And Nebuchadnezzar, he now has a statue erected. And he has his, his men to play music and the trumpets. And he tell everybody, when you hear the sounds of the trumpets, we want you to bow down to me and worship me. Let's go there. Chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was three cubits, three, three course score cubits, and a breadth thereof six cubits. And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the provisions of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent and gathered together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to, to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the princes and the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the providence which were gathered unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people and nations, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the psalter, the decimal, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has set up. And whoso not fall down to worship, shall the same be cast in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of all the instruments, all the people of the nation and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden, the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. And thou, king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the, the harp, the sackbolt, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Or whoso falleth not down and worship, that shall be cast into the midst of a fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. This is not the name, Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego of these men O king have not regarded thee they, they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded bring Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and they brought them the, these men before the king then he goes on to speak and he tells them we're going to give you one more opportunity we're going to play the instruments and we're going to give you an opportunity to bow down. Drop down to verse 16. Shadrach, well, let's go up to verse 15. Everybody there? Yeah. And it says in verse 15, Now if you be ready at the time which you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, and psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego answered and said, Go back. Go back. What did Nebuchadnezzar say? When he said, When I throw you into that fiery furnace, 
He said, who is that God? What did one of the, the, the men names say? Who is? What was it? Y'all remember? Listen to that. Who is what God is? Then Nebuchadnezzar says to him, who is that God that's going to save you? Do you see the fun that's being poked at it? And when you look at the world and you look at the church and you look at God's people as a whole, can you see the fun that the world is poking at God's people? God says that marriage is between man and woman. Mm -hmm. But we're going to say you can marry whoever you want to marry. And the world is allowing it. But you know what they're looking back at? God, now what are you going to do? Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? God said, right now, I'm not going to do anything because I can't. I'm in heaven. But I'm coming back. But I have people. I have servants that knows my word. And when they see these things, they speak against it. When they see these things, if it causes them to lose their life, if it causes them to lose their jobs because of it, they're going to stand up for what's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing that Azariah, <laughs> Mishael, and Ananias, and, uh, and Azariah did. When, when Nebuchadnezzar had gave them an opportunity, I want you to bow down again. If not, you're going to die. They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. In other words, we don't even have to answer you. They said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up. Then ne excuse me. Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace once seven times more than it wanted to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men which were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the fiery furnace. These men were bound in their coats and their hosen and their hats and the other garments, and they were cast in the midst of the fire. Now he hath bound them, they are tied up, mm -hmm. and they are thrown in the midst of the furnace. And his men die. But Nebuchadnezzar goes and looks in the window. Yes, he did. They're no longer bound. They are walking around. And Nebuchadnezzar sees not just three now. He sees four. And he goes back and he asks his men, did you not throw three into the furnace? He said, because I looked and I saw four. I saw three, but I saw a fourth one. And it looked like the Son of Man. See, when your life is dedicated to God, death, nor troubles, nor anything can separate you from the love of God. Amen. That is what Paul meant. He said, what can separate me from the love of God? I am so dedicated to God. What can separate me? Because if you kill me, you're not doing nothing but just sending me home. Right. Right. <laughs> you're not doing anything but sending me home. Amen. That's right. See, Paul understood. We have to understand. The Bible said we're just pilgrims passing through this land. Right. This world, the song says, right. this world is not my home. That's right. I'm just are passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. So I can't feel at home where? In this world anymore. anymore. Cause this world does not love God. This world don't love you and anything that's associated with God. And he, the world is going to try to do everything it can to wipe God from your mind. That's right. He's always done it. Amen.
my brother and I were talking yesterday. They went down to the to the museum in Montgomery. And he said, bro, if you hadn't been, you'll need to go. And that was a trip we went on with Brother Greg when we took everybody down. I said, brother, let me ask you. I said, if I've kept you in slavery all your life, and then I tell you, you can be free. I said, what are you going to do? He said, well, I just start from the bottom. I said, but where's the bottom? Do you understand what I'm asking? Because see, if all your life you have been told you're good for nothing, you have been told you're not smart, you have been told you're not worth anything, you have been told that animals are more worth more of more worth than you are. But then when the world sets you free, why did you go? What did you do? Now, I said all that because when we look at the conditioning of what's going on today, Amen. what is the world telling us? If we are not dedicated to God, what is it telling us? We're worthless. We're worthless. Jesus came to his own. And his own received him not. But then it said, but to those that receive him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. The world cares nothing. The world will degrade you. We, we, I was listening and we talked last night too. He said about reparations. I want, I want you to watch something. And it should be given back, but I want you to watch. This is what Satan will do. Satan will make a young man or a woman dress almost totally new and make them a millionaire. Mm -hmm. He will make them go into a studio listen to put some music to a beat and then say a bunch of nothing <laughs> and pay them yeah. big money you know why because if i can get this young man or if i can get this young woman if i can get this young black man to degrade his own people they can stop saying that we racist if I can get this young woman to dress in a little bit of nothing, and then these young black women that's coming up looking at them, that's aspiring to be like them, I want to be rich. So what's the what's the image you see? What is the image you see? You see young men with their pants hanging down, and they're fine with it. But if you don't know the meaning behind that, you know what the world is doing? Amen. They're sitting back and they're laughing because you're carrying out an agenda and you don't even know that you're doing it. Right. But they will pay you, they will pay us to demean each other so that way they don't have to worry about us, right. as God talked about, sticking together, being a tight fit unit. Right. Because if you are a tight fit unit, what's going to happen with the devil? He's going to leave you. Right, right. But if I can just get you to separate, if I can get you to separate, Nebuchadnezzar has tried to get the these two these four boys to separate their relationship with God and follow Him, but they were so dedicated. No matter what Nebuchadnezzar did, they weren't gonna be in. To the point to where Daniel finally told Nebuchadnezzar, "You had a dream, and this was gonna happen to you." You had a dream that the dew was falling from heaven. And Nebuchadnezzar had no idea that this was going to be him. Because Nebuchadnezzar walked out one day when God had blessed him. Mm -hmm. God had blessed Nebuchadnezzar to be in the position that he was. And that's what the world don't understand. Everything they do is God is looking at it. Amen. God has control of everything they're doing. Amen. But he walks out and he says, look at all I've done. And then God causes his heart to become the heart of a beast. And he sends him out in the field. His nails begin to grow. 
his hair began to grow long. And the dew of heaven falls on him until he realizes who God is. How do we live a life if our mind is not in the right frame of mind to live a life that's fully dedicated to God? How do we do it? Turn your Bibles to Philippians and, and coming down to the end. Let's one be yours. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 you get it you can read it Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 we all have it <clears throat> finally brother whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely <clears throat> Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. See what it says? Mm -hmm. If there is, if there anything be true, you think on those things. But now the question is, how do you know it's true? Right. You have to investigate it. Right. right. You have to investigate what's going on. You can't sit by idle and just accept everything that comes your way. No, just yeah. because it sounds good does not mean that it's good. Yeah. We went through we went through in one of the lessons, we went through 1 John, and it talked about try the spirits by the spirits because there are many false prophets that have went out into the world, right? right. right. Then it goes on to say, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, and whatsoever things are lovely and are good report. Now, as it's telling you to look for these things, they are honest, they are good, they are pure, they are of good report, because who says so? Absolutely. So we know what God says is pure. We know what God says is honest. Amen. We know what God says, what things are lovely. Amen. We know what God says in his word, all things are just. Amen. Then he goes on to say, if there be any virtue of any praise, think on these things. Right, right. So in order to live a life dedicated to God, you set your heart on what God deems perfect. Amen. You set your heart on what God deems is good. Amen. And anything that's contrary to the word of God, you try your best to correct it. If you can't correct it, you move so you move on and Amen. you continue to follow God. Right. If there is anyone Amen. within the sound of my voice that has not been living, thinking, or doing what God has asked you to do, and you would like to give your life to God, you can do so by hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and, be and being baptized. If you would like to do so, you can do so now as we sing the song of invitation. Don't you